Hi, continuing with our secrets today, we will discuss some important secrets regarding food drop. Sometimes in exam, food drop cases are kept. Residents find it a little bit difficult at times to distinguish between a common baronial nerve lesion, a sciatic nerve lesion, or whether the food drop is due to a higher level lesion like the L5 nerve root. So I will go into certain salient points that will help you to distinguish uh, the, the causative lesions, the causative level of lesions in a foot drop. Just go through some fundamentals. In our mind, it is deep rooted that foot drop is due to a peroneal nerve palsy. So the common peroneal nerve has got two divisions. It has got a superficial peroneal nerve and the deep peroneal nerve. The superficial peroneal nerve supplies the peroneus longus and brevis. And these are the everters of the foot. That has to be clear. Now the deep peroneal nerve supplies the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, peroneus tertius, extensor digitorum brevis, extensor hallucis brevis, and the first and second dorsal androsia. Sciatic nerve is the one that divides into the tibial and the common peroneal nerves. With regard to the muscle tibialis anterior, it is very important to remember that it is supplied predominantly by the L5 nerve root. Also, it receives a little bit contribution from the L4 nerve root. Tibialis posterior is supplied by the tibial nerve. So this fund, if you have these fundamentals in mind, the next slides become easier. So if the common peroneal nerve is involved, patient has got weakness of foot dorsiflexion as well as eversion. Foot inversion is normal because it is supplied by the tibialis posterior. Angle reflex is present in this case. The involvement, isolated involvement of the superficial peroneal nerve is a rare clinical entity. If the deep peroneal nerve alone is involved, eversion is preserved as well as the angle jerk. Suppose the foot drop, the predominance of foot drop is due to a sciatic nerve palsy. In addition to the weakness of dorsiflexion, there will be weakness of plantar flexion, knee flexion, inversion, inversion are going to be weak and absent angle jerk. Okay. Now, suppose the lesion is higher up than the sciatic nerve. There are two possibilities now. It can, could either be in the L5 root or it can be in the lumbosacral plexus. The key here is the testing of the tibialis posterior muscle and the hip abductor. If there is a weakness of the hip abductor with preserved tibialis posterior function in the setting of a foot drop, this indicates that L5 root is the culprit. So whenever you get a foot drop, it is mandatory to examine the proximal gluteal muscles. So hip abductor weakness is a character of L5 involvement. Patient might be walking with a tender lumbar gait. Angle jerk is usually preserved. Another important point here to note is root involvement is usually associated with pain, while peripheral nerve involvement are not generally painful. Now, if it's the lumbosacral plexus that is involved, patient has more profound weakness with weakness of hip extensors, adductors, and knee extensors, as well as the tibialis posterior. So the extent of weakness is more in a case of plexus lesion. Patient usually not complain of radicular pain, but they will be complaining of dysesthetic type of pain. 
Now, you might be wondering why I did not mention about sensory findings. It is well known about the autonomous area of these nerves. Superficial peroneal nerve, the autonomous area is the entire dorsum of foot except in the first web space which is supplied by the deep peroneal. Comperoneal nerve, the autonomous area is a little bit higher than the superficial peroneal nerve in the anterolateral spot of the leg. L5, but you know that the, there is a lot of overlap between these L5 and common peroneal nerve dermatomes. So, it, so when in a case of foot drop, sensory findings are least reliable to identify the the nature of the lesion. Again, when you think about foot drop, one should not, at least theoretically, forget about central causes of foot drop. For example, a lesion which involves anti the horn cell, like a motor neuron disease or poliomyelitis, can have bilateral foot drop or foot weakness. Then one interesting lesion that is seen in the parasitical lobule like the meningioma or sometimes a metastasis to the brain in the parasitical area, parasitical motor cortex can present with foot drop. But here again, sensory findings are absent because it is predominantly the motor cortex that are involved. So if you remember these important points, you can easily sail through foot drop in an exam case. Thank you.